Do you need a memory palace to help you remember well, all of your memory palaces? Well, this is a interesting question that was raised recently by Richard Baker in the comments. Thanks to all of you who participate in the comments. I really, really appreciate that. I want to address more of them in the future. So keep them coming. And you know, this idea of creating an internal index in your mind that would help you instantly refer to information that you have previously memorized is quite an interesting one, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary at all. I was gonna say I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I don't know if it's absolutely necessary or not. But I'm gonna give you a compelling reason and argument to think about this and see how you go, because I think it's much more easy and direct if you use the memory palace technique in the most easy and direct way to use it. But let's look first at Richard's comment. Shan't we? Richard said, I'm interested in your thoughts on indexing meta-organization, if that makes sense. It does make sense on its surface, but I never want to assume, so I asked Richard for more detail. Richard said, for example, I can use memory techniques to remember lists of information regarding different topics, to-do lists of different categories, or have more than one memory palace location that might have different sub-locations or serve a different purpose. So I'm no longer relying on passive brain processes to store this information, but I am still relying on passive brain processes to remember what I've learned. By indexing, I mean a way to build a reference of what you have in your memory so you won't forget that either. If I have a useful list of concepts memorized in case I have to survive in the wilderness, but don't have some kind of index to remember that I have remembered that list in the first place, I might not remember that I have that list remembered. Or I might have a good memory of all the stuff stored in a given memory palace location, but if I eventually have 20 memory palaces and forget the entry point to one of them, I might not be able to get back to that string of connections that leads me to remember all the stuff in that palace except by accident. Right now I'm just trying to have a master list of lists to remind me of the things I've built, but it feels convoluted and like it will get too long soon. And I was wondering if there were other approaches that were more elegant. Okay, Richard, that is great context. And let's notice something first here. Your example of wilderness survival is not really down to concepts. That's not the way that I would use the word concepts. So if you haven't seen the video where I talk about concepts, then you might wanna go through that because what you're really talking about is a system of processes or a series of processes. And in the case of wilderness survival, we're really talking about something where you'd wanna have some lived experience if possible. So you can rely on your gut instinct as opposed to, oh, I have to memorize all this stuff. One of the reasons being is that you might be dehydrated, you might be starved, you might have a lot of anxiety, and you know, there's all kinds of things where memory as such with memory palaces is not gonna be the thing that I wanna rely on. I wanna rely on, and it's one of the reasons why I went to Sistema, which is the Russian martial art, is to be able to do the right thing in order to maximize my chances of survival in a conflict. And I don't wanna be sitting there, oh, how was that move? No, I want my body to just do what is correct and most optimal in that situation. So when it comes to like survival things, I would practice being a survivalist and I would go out and regularly camp and place myself in situations where these things might happen and enact them in a particular way so that it is bodily remembered. And I wouldn't necessarily have memory palaces involved in that at all. However, to your question of having an index to remember sorts of things, Here's the first way to think about this, and then we'll take it to the next level. The first thing is, is that if you create your memory palaces as I teach, which is indexed to the alphabet, then you already have the index. So if I wanna remember certain things like German words, for example, and I'm stretching in my mind, Sigmal, for example, it's in a Z memory palace, it has to be, because it starts with the letter Z, right? Now. There's lots and lots of things like that. I can think back to my dissertation. I did a lot on friendship. There are three concepts of friendship that Aristotle did. And if I want to, you know, really revisit them and get, get deep into what the ins and outs of them were, I can think back to that Mary Palace. And it's going to be an A Mary Palace because Aristotle starts with A. a. And I literally thought of a, a painting that I've seen of him walking through the Mary Palace, walking me through those different ideas of friendship. Right? So it's already there. The indexing is in how you use the Mary Palace. You don't need an index that refers to the index. The information itself gives you the indexing and then you just put it in Mary Palaces that make sense to you. Now, 
You might say, yeah, but Anthony, that information is in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, so why wouldn't you put it in an end memory palace? And, and the answer is, you could. I just didn't do it that way because in my research, I was only focused on the Nicomachean Ethics, and I didn't have to deal with poetics, I didn't have to deal with ethics, I just dealt with Nicomachean <laughs> Ethics, and it was just that simple, right? So, you know, just do it in the way that makes sense to you, and if it made more sense to you to have an end memory palace for Nicomachean Ethics, great. No problem. But the point is, is to understand that the indexing system is self-indexing. You don't need an index that refers to the index. Now, if you wanted to build one, then I think you're gonna have a self-interfering system. And the reason why is because how else would you index something other than with the alphabet? So now you have an alphabet that refers to the alphabet, right? So let's say that I have a memory palace system. It's 26 deep because it's got one memory palace for each letter of the alphabet. And now I want to memorize that system. Well, what if I have five different A memory palaces? Then I have to expand it. I have to use some sort of software all the time. Why wouldn't I then just use another memory system to help me remember A1? Because I have a 00 to 99, right? So for every two digit number from 00 to 99, there is a image. Am I gonna have 100 A memory palaces? Probably not, but 12, certainly, and I do. So what is the signature for the 12th memory palace that belongs to A? It is Tintin, because Tintin is my image for 12, right? If I had a 25th one, then it would be either a nail or Neal Ferguson, which I sometimes use, right? Because of how the major system helps me create images that are brain dead simple to reconstruct. So it's self-indexing. I don't need an index to expand over time. It already expands easily, right? Now, if you check out in the masterclass, there's a course on memorizing numbers. And in that course, there's something called the locker technique. And I talk about, you know, the potential to make a kind of infinite structure out of just a very simple building. Now, infinite, I use that word very loosely because none of us are going to live long enough to do that. But there is a way inside of a single, I use the example of a high school, to have a single constantly expanding set of memory palaces that themselves expand, right? So you might want to look into that. However, it again is self-indexing as opposed to an index that guides them all. I think that one of the reasons why that, that people think this way, and it's not the first time I've had this question, is that they want to have some sort of certainty that they're not gonna forget things. And that's where really using the Mary Palace technique correctly comes into play. Because you don't use the Mary Palace to store information. You can, and that effect will happen. But that's not the core point of the Mary Palace technique. The Mary Palace technique has a core point, which is that it allows you to use the structure of the Mary Palace itself to get the information into long-term memory so you don't need the Mary Palace. You don't have to say, well, I need to go to my mind palace like Sherlock. I think that's one of the weakest analogies I've ever seen. And I think it's a poisonous one because it's not how people have used the Mary Palace historically. I don't believe it's how they should use it now. Rather, what you do is you strategically select the information that you want to remember. You place it strategically inside of those memory palaces in a way that allows recall rehearsal, which I teach in the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass. And then that allows the information to get into long-term memory through a process that's called active recall. And active recall is basically what happens when you cause yourself to recall information. It's a little bit of a stretch, but by actually doing it and doing it in a multi-sensory way based on magnetic imagery that you put in your memory palaces, you are getting the benefits of memory formation. And because of how we use the memory palace, you're getting primacy and recency on each and every station of the memory palace, right? Because we're using serial positioning in a particular way and we're using patterns to revisit the information to reduce the amount of recall that we have to do and get the maximum transference into long-term memory. Now, if you really want to double down and go for gold, you do your recall rehearsal and then you do things like what's called levels of processing effect, reading, writing, speaking, listening. So you take whatever it is that you've memorized and then you go and you write a summary of it in your own hand, right? You go and you follow up and read two more articles on it. You go and you you know, speak to other people. So it's getting through the muscle memory of your mouth and you go and you listen to some podcasts. So you're getting this multi-sensory reframing and reiteration that essentially just involves you as much as possible through multimedia sources. And the most important thing I've found is writing summaries by hand because this actually causes you to process what you've memorized as you're recalling it. So 
This I think is far superior and it is really why that I sometimes I know where in memory palaces things were from my PhD years and so forth but usually I just know the information <laughs> and that's what you want. Now this is partly like what I suggested about being out in the wilderness, right? So you want to actually go out and practice in the wilderness. Well, when I did my studies and to this day when I study and memorize things, I take myself into the wilderness. I memorize the stuff. I use the recall rehearsal patterns in order to usher it into long-term memory. And then I actually go into the wilderness by writing it by hand in my own words, summarizing it. That's the wilderness of knowledge. I go and I speak with people. I talk about the things that I've learned to get it through the mouth. That's going out into the wilderness. And if I wanted to survive from cougars and bears and be able to make a tent that actually, you know, would help me survive from exposure, then I would go out into the wilderness and I would do those things. And in that case, that's how I would memorize those concepts. Now, if there were certain things about, you know, uh, how that, uh, how long a, a stick should be, or, uh, you know, numbers and things about the cardinal directions that I needed to memorize that were hard information, same thing. Memorize it in the Mary Palace, use the recall rehearsal patterns to get it into long-term memory, and then take it into the wilderness of actually writing it out from memory, speaking about it with other people, trying to encounter it in more videos and podcasts by listening and reading a couple more articles around it so that you have a phalanx of knowledge around that topic. The deeper you can get through all your multisensory systems, the more you're gonna compound that value of what you've established with the recall rehearsal process out of the Mary Palaces. So, I do not believe an index is needed. I do not believe that you need to do any of that stuff. However, I do believe that it's a very good practice to keep a memory journal and to write down your memory palaces and to draw them. And this is all covered in the free course at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT. So if you haven't gone through that yet, I show you all the ins and outs, get you your first memory palace network all linked to the alphabet. It's very, very powerful. It's very, very fun. It's very, very useful. And then you're going to be able to have your magnetic imagery just bang presto inside of those memory palaces so that you can do the recall rehearsal process and take it out into the wilderness of application. And it's so rewarding. It's so much fun. And it feels so good. You actually can feel the neurogenesis in your brain, or at least I can. But you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So I enjoy it more and more all the time. I hope you'll enjoy it too, because it's so rewarding. So hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you're new here, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up, and let me know what your action plan is. Are you gonna go out and try to create an index for yourself? Or are you gonna use the memory palace in a way that is always already indexical.